Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show all of you a couple ways that when you're editing your videos in DaVinci Resolve 17, you can speed up your video editing process, especially if you happen to be working on a low-end machine. So right here on the timeline, we're looking at a 4K resolution video clip. Uh, we can see that in the metadata up here, 4096 by 2160 pixels. And I've also added a watercolor effect onto the video clip. So if we look in the inspector here, we can see that under effects. So watercolor and several other effects are going to be very GPU intensive. So if I'm playing back 4K resolution with video effects on a lower end machine, we're going to get a result like this. When we go ahead and hit play in the timeline, we can see the frames per second counter up here going very slow, 0, 2.2 frames per second. It's kind of unplayable. Okay, so now let's talk about a few ways that we can fix that. So one of my favorites is to go up to the playback menu. And here we can see timeline proxy mode. So if you change this from off to half resolution or quarter resolution, what that's going to do is it's going to make this preview window for Resolve. Use a lower resolution output that you're going to see when you're previewing your video. So if I put this at half resolution, we probably won't even notice that much difference because the source video file was already really high resolution. So it's dropping it by half, but it's still very, very visible in everything that's going on here. Just from that, if we go ahead and hit play, we can see the frames per second jumps up to four here. So from 0, 0 0.5, maybe two at most frames per second, it becomes a lot more playable. We can make that jump a lot more though, by going to playback, timeline proxy mode, and making it quarter resolution. And obviously we can notice a little bit of difference in the quality here. It is showing a lower uh, video resolution output, but as a trade-off, we get it up to, looks like about 15 frames per second, 12, 15 frames per second. And that is a lot more workable when you're trying to edit a high resolution video file like this. And now when you use the proxy mode over here, that's not going to affect the final output at all. If you go to the deliver tab and you're still going to be rendering your project out to ultra HD resolution, it's still going to output to that high video quality that you want. Of course, naturally, the higher your resolution for the output, the longer it's going to take to render. But as long as the render is successful, even if you are rendering on a lower end machine, it should play back just fine after it is outputted to a normal video file. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, if you add video effects onto your clips, it is going to slow the playback a lot since it needs to render all of those effects in order to show you these preview images. So one thing you can do is to actually not add those effects on until you have all of your basic cuts done. But another alternative, you can add the effects in ahead of time and then disable them temporarily until you actually need them in the export. So in the inspector, effects we can find our open effects that we've dropped onto any clip and just disable them temporarily by toggling them off right here so now if i go ahead and hit play with this quarter resolution uh timeline playback so this time we hit play we're basically going to get it to play back at the full speed of the base video clip it was uh, recorded at 23.976 frames per second so it's playing back smoothly that's what we really want to see so one other trick you should know as you start editing your projects using the fusion page and color page, both of which can add many different video effects to your videos, is that you can bypass all of those as well. Basically hide them temporarily while you're editing your video and you need the timeline to play back smoothly. And then you can just have it be in the final export. You don't need it to be showing all of the time while you're editing. So the place to do that is up here in the top right is this little icon for bypass color grade and fusion effects. If you left click on that, then everything that happens in the fusion page and the color page is not going to show up here temporarily until you re-enable that. So on the color page, you'll see that icon here as well, bypass color grades and fusion effects. And on the fusion page, if you want, you can disable individual nodes by selecting them, right clicking and if you want, while you're working on the Fusion page, you can disable individual nodes. So some nodes might have really GPU intensive effects going on. So you can just come in here and toggle individual nodes on and off if you need the playback performance to be increased while you're editing with your node setups. Basically, if you only need to look at one part of the effect rather than the whole thing all at once, then that can be another way you can get it to play back a little smoother. Now, if you're working on a really slow computer and you just absolutely need any performance boost in the playback that you can get, 
one option you can do if you want to edit your video by audio and just completely ignore the video altogether until you're ready to export then you can actually disable your video tracks either all of them or individually by clicking over here disable video track so if you have some audio associated with that video clip you could just hit play listen to the audio and make cuts based on that I actually do that sometimes when I'm editing tutorials because sometimes there's just not that much going on with the screen so I can make my initial cuts and then go back enable the video and uh, double check everything before I actually render so I personally haven't used this one so much but there is one other option you can use which is to generate optimized media versions of your base video clips from the media pool so if you find a video clip and you want to generate a optimized version which is going to be cached to the project and can play back in place of your original video clips then you can just go here right click on the uh, video clips you want to optimize generate optimized media one of the downsides of doing things this way though is that it can take quite a while for a video clip to get optimized for your project and generally, if the source video file already matches the frames per second and video resolution of your uh, project, then I don't really notice much of a difference here. But if you're importing clips that have all kinds of wonky settings on them, uh, then this might be worth giving a shot. So if you generate the optimized media, you'll get this little bar. It'll take a little while to render it, depending on how fast your computer is and how long the base video clip is so you can see this can take quite a while so if you had a very big source file maybe an hour long recording then that could take quite a while to actually generate that optimized version so if you do that make sure that in the playback menu that used optimized media if available is checked here use proxy media if available also checked there by default so while we're on the subject of the playback menu final final thing for this video so in this menu by default the render cache is usually going to be enabled and what the render cache allows uh, resolve to do is that whenever it renders frames of your video with the effects added on like down here with the watercolor effect it'll start to take those frames that it rendered cache them to your memory your ram on your computer and then when you're playing them back the second or third time you'll see a little blue bar appear up here for each of those clips. And it should play back much, much faster because it doesn't need to continually render it every time you play. So when you're done with your video, even if it plays back a little slow in the timeline for you, when you actually export your video to a video file, even if it's in 4K resolution, it should play back smoothly when it's actually exported. So if it takes a while to render, don't worry about it. When it's actual video file that's been compressed, optimized and all of that, it should be able to play back smoothly, just as if you were watching a YouTube video like this one. So that's pretty much going to be it for a few tricks that you can use in Resolve to speed up your editing process when you're working in the timeline, or even the Fusion page in the color page for video effects as well. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you all got something out of it, and I'll see you in my future video content.